well, everybody. Can you say take two? I went through this whole shelving unit, took off all the balls of yarn, gave you wonderful accounts of the yarn and what was dyed, what was purchased, what was sock yarn, what was what, only to find out the camera was not recording. So, <laughs> you know, if it was good enough to talk about once, I guess it's good enough to talk about twice. So I'm just going to do a really quick recap um, of what I pulled off the shelf. So I'm going to kind of backtrack a little bit. I know I got a little bit of footage, so I'm just going to kind of pick up where I think I left off. The idea with this shelf, it had had my worsted weight yarn on it. Then it had kind of become a catch-all and there was a little bit of, a little bit of everything if anything you know was stuff lying around i would just come up here and if there was a spare space i would just shove it in and these shelves were packed so full there was a little bit of everything just when i thought i had pulled out all the yarn i would actually like bend down and look and there'd be a couple more balls like shoved way back in the back corner so let me go just give you a quick recap of what was there came across three of these really pretty purpley hemp. This is 100% hemp. It is, oh, turn it right side up for you, Hemp for Knitting, Lana Knits, and she is out in British Columbia here in Canada. You can order directly from her on her website. She's got, that's where all this hemp and hemp cotton, all the hemp yarn I have is I've ordered from there. And I also found four random balls of this cotton and hemp, which we, I've got all organized over on the shelf. That's part of what yesterday's video was. So these can just go right over there. These, there was a lot more right there. <laughs> That is all filled with more 100% hemp. And this hemp is, hemp is not itchy. It is a little rough. It's certainly not soft, but it gets softer the more you wash it. So it's a good alternative. I mean, I guess if you're looking for a summer knit, I, I really like hemp. It's kind of one of those things I think people, you kind of like it or you don't. It's a little different. It's not as soft as cotton, but it has no itch like wool. Something you just need to try. And, oh, I just had a great thought. This is something I hadn't thought about in a long time. 100% or hundred percent hemp is supposed to make great dishcloths. Can you see the light bulb just going on? You know, I always, I always, I do a dishcloth every week. Well, who says it has to be made out of cotton? Can you say new start Monday? <laughs> I think, wouldn't that be fun? Try it, try it with hemp. Oh, wouldn't those make fun dishcloths for Christmas gifts out of 100% hemp? Something totally different. Anyway, okay, I'm totally getting distracted. This was not in the first first video. I get, see, maybe, maybe I had tech problems for a reason. Maybe I was supposed to talk, you know, have this light bulb moment that I can make dishcloths out of that hemp. I think that's going to happen, you guys. I also found this tucked way underneath at the back and I have no recollection of where I got this from. 99% of this yarn I have a pretty good idea where I got it, who gave it to me, what I bought it for. I was gonna say I'm drawing a total blank on this and you know why? Because I'm thinking, I was gifted this. All of a sudden, I'm thinking my friend Amanda. Did she give this to me as a birth, like a birthday or Christmas gift? I'm wondering. And I bet you probably maybe came from Little Red Mitten at one time. That is, that is kind of what I'm thinking. Because I have no memory of buying this. I think maybe that was a gift from my friend Amanda. I think so. Anyways, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. It got stuck down there on the bottom shelf and I had totally forgotten about it. So that was a really, that was probably one of the biggest surprises of all the yarn. I don't know. I'm going to try to tip you down here. 
because there's just way too much yarn for me to show you. All of this pile, can't quite see it. All patents classic wool. All patents classic wool. I think what I'm going to do is the shelves over here that are still pretty much, that are empty. There's one really that's empty. I think I may just make that a whole classic wool shelf because I have got all of these balls. Like I could do some serious color work. This is aquamarine. This is taupe. I'm sure. It, yes. Taupe. Even though it looks like chocolate brown to me, they're calling it taupe. I might say something like this is more taupe, but I don't name the yarn. This, this was a fun project. Magenta. Yes, that's it. We had a couple of years in a row at our, at our guild, the Knitting Goddesses Guild. At the beginning of the year, we always pick a color for the year. This one, I think it was, I'm pretty sure this was Caitlin's idea a number of years ago, and it was a fantastic idea to have a color of the year. And what we do is everybody goes around, they get a ballot, and they write down a name. And I had initially thought that, you know, I thought it would be blue, pink, red, yellow, whatever, right? Well, didn't somebody, I think it was Liz, was it Magenta maybe the first, this might have started the fun a couple of years ago. Well, didn't she write down, instead of just writing pink, she wrote down Magenta and gather up all the names, put them in a hat and somebody draws and we drew Magenta. And I thought, oh my gosh, Magenta. And, um, and then the idea is, is throughout the whole year, if anybody comes in with a finished item that has magenta in it, you got an extra name in our um, draws that we did every few months. And so this sparked a whole string of hilarious events. And having this magenta color ended up being so fun because then it came down to, well, what exactly is the shade of magenta? So one of our members, Linda, um, I think I volunteered her. <laughs> what is, what is that word? Like told volunteered or whatever. Anyways, it was all in good fun that she was the judge. So, um, she actually found a website that had all the shades of magenta and we sent that out to everybody. And then when somebody would come in, and have a finished project, you know, we'd like say, oh, is that magenta? Yes or no? And of course we have very, very lax rules. So if you were anywhere within the realm, um, you got your extra, extra name in the draw for a prize. And, you know, sometimes we would have to say, oh, we have to call in the, the official judge and we'd have to have Linda make the final ruling, you know, which was, which was all, you know, lots of laughing and teeheeing and, uh, um, there was lots of times people would try to push the bar a little bit and we had, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was probably one of those things where you just had to be there, but anyways, it was hilarious. And when I was in Listowel one time, I saw this yarn in the, uh, it was in the sale bin. There was bags of this and it was magenta and it was pink. And so I brought it back to share with all the guild members. Everybody got one or two balls, whatever they wanted. And we did a whole other guild project where, I don't know, they were given so many months and you could knit whatever you wanted using your magenta and you could incorporate other colors with it. You could make whatever you wanted, big or small, just trying to be the most creative you could possibly be. And then we all came together at the, you know, that next meeting and presented our projects. And so it was supposed to be secret knitting so nobody would know what it was. And it was a lot of fun all because we had picked a color of the year. So if you guys have a knitting group or a guild, I highly suggest bring it up. You know, I know right now nobody's really meeting in person, but you can still do it virtually. But anyways, let me tell you, we have had more fun with these colors. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a really fantastic idea. So anyways, that's where the magenta came from. I also found this 
I don't know if this qualifies as magenta. It probably does. But it wasn't bought for that purpose, but it's Briggs and Little. Why I brought bought this neon pink. I don't really remember what the specific project was. I know I bought, I'm, well, I know I bought it. I remember buying it. It was when I was on vacation up north at the cottage. There's a dollar store up there that has Briggs and Little. So that's where a majority of all this Briggs and Little has come from. Because, you know, when you go to the cottage, I feel like I need to support the yarn industry up there. So I do. <laughs> I found bags. More of Patton's Classic Wool. This is a deep, all, deep olive. Probably a little deeper maybe than it shows on the screen. But look, at, I love this. I found more of the hemp wool. I found a few more balls of that. Tons of classic wool in here. Lots and lots of this mercury colorway. Like as in like there's two bags down here on the floor. Plus a few oddballs. And what else did I find that was really, really pretty? There's two skeins of this. And there was a, there's a, on one of the tags, there was a pattern for a cute little, really, really cropped, like almost like a bolero lacy little sweater. And it's supposed to be, yeah, we're supposed to make it out of two skeins. So we'll see. I like it. So I'm going to keep it because, and I may, I may actually make, use the pattern. Most of the time I don't. Most of the time I end up just doing my own thing. But who knows? Maybe I will. Um use that pattern but I like the color it's fleece artist it's gorgeous I'm gonna keep it I found two skeins of yarn that were dyed by our friend Suzanne from Knit Stitch this is yarn bird studio and this was like way back when she first started dyeing before she had her actual labels printed I don't know why this has got yellow in it I guess that's why I liked it very fun, very rainbowy. This I like, and this to me, it looks like it should be, I don't know, a hat or a cowl. It's almost verging on red, but I just know. I remember walking into the shop and seeing this, and it was like, it called my name. And then I brought it home and sat it on a shelf and did nothing with it. So maybe this should be a start at some point too. Now I know in... Um, round one of this video, I had said to you guys, what do you think? This is a chunky, I'm not sure what this is. Ericana? Does that label ring any bells with anybody? Oh, kind of hard here. Anyways, I thought, what do you think? Would you put those two together? I know this is dark and this is bright, like the hues aren't the same, but I don't know, there's something about those two together that I think I might like. Yes, no, maybe, try it, I don't know. You can leave me a comment down below and let me see what you think. Thumbs up, thumbs down, mix the yarns or not? I'll think about that. I mean. I've been in no rush to cast it on yet, so I can I can wait, you know, a couple more weeks. What else? Okay, so I went through sock yarn, classic wool, no, nope. Patton's Croy. Patton's Croy. This was a mix. These two bags of white are Patton's Croy. These were just some oddballs of yarn. This red is one that I dyed. Down here, I know this is just off camera, so I'll pull this up. But remember this yarn? This is that Patton's. Patton's Lace. They call it Patton's Lace, but a few of you guys who have had experience knitting with this, you said, no, it's not really lace weight. It's more of like a light fingering weight. And on the ball band, they do call it a number two, which is like a, a sport weight or a DK, but it doesn't really look that thick. So I think I'm just going to put it over here on my sock wall sock weight wall and I'll try to group together a few people gave me the suggestion they said you know what why don't you just put you know set aside a couple little cubbies or a row or something of sock weight fingering weight yarn that has no nylon 
and I thought that was a brilliant idea. So that's what I'm going to do. So for right now, these guys, these are just sitting over here. Oh, I didn't show you this. This is beautiful. This is heavy. I should actually weigh this. This came from Americano, Americano. They used to be in Toronto. And what I think they're maybe online now. There is a beautiful shop in Toronto and they, I heard, have closed up their physical store. So hopefully they're still in business just online. And this came from there. And I think this is, for some reason, I want to say camel, but I don't think I would have this much camel yarn. I think this is maybe alpaca, but well, it's not super soft, you guys. It's, it's kind of picky. Interesting. Yeah. I think this again, this was one, oh, that was that day. I, did I tell you guys the story about when we went to Toronto and we came home in a snowstorm the first weekend of April? I'm sure I've shared that, that story with you. That's, this yarn came from that trip. And I'm pretty sure my friend, my fellow goddess, Kathy, we split this or something. Maybe I'll have to ask her if she remembers exactly what this is. Another reason why you should knit up your yarn and not let it sit on your shelf for years. But anyways, so that was that. What else did I find? I found this. I remember, I remember buying this. I'm not exactly sure where it came from. It's called Red Azalea in Whisper Lace. That's the label. Can you see that? Anyways, I know it is kind of ready color, which normally I would not buy. I think I was thinking maybe of my mom because she likes reds and she likes pinks. And it does have a little bit, you can see that they're orange and pink and red. There's something about it. I just totally not my colors, but there again, it spoke to me. So it is a number one lace weight. It's wool, 70% wool, 30% silk. And this does feel really nice. I really like to see how that knits up. So I am, where did it come up here? And this I had, this came from Michael's. It's loops and threads and there's no wool in it. It's acrylic viscose from bamboo and polyester. I think I brought, bought this thinking I would make, maybe knit up a shawl for one of my friends who don't wear wool. I'm wondering if that's why I have that. Um, did we, oh, I went into great detail in the first, the first take of this, this, um, episode on my love for County. When, when I talked about Noro in one of the last videos and I said about how one of the great things about Noro is the colors and the long colors, um, stripes in it. County is also very much the same way. County though is not a soft yarn. This is like a Briggs and Little lopy, rustic-y feel. If you don't like yarn that has that, um, oh, I don't want to say pickiness or itchiness, but I don't know any other better way to say it. I mean, this is a rustic-y, woolly wool, but I love it. So this stuff can be a little deceiving because some of it you get what you see and others there's like surprise colors inside. So like this one, you can see I've, I've pulled out some of this gold, but it looks just like a beigey gray color until you kind of really look inside and you can sometimes see colors peaked, kind of tucked away inside. I've got a lot of colors of this because I love it. Let me pull this out out of this cubby here because I want to show you something just to prove. Oh, and I can, I can talk about this for a long time because I really like this stuff. So here's the ball band and Lucy Neepy was the one who I, well, for me, introduced it to me and then Little Red Mitten started carrying it when she was coming to teach some classes there. And I think it's pronounced, we pronounce it county. And anyways, so see, here's one again. 
that has. I don't know if the lights, all that, if you can see those colors down in there. But um, this is, oh, this is the same color. And I've just taken a ball and I wound it into a cake. So you can see all of those colors. So it looks like a Karen cake when it's wound like this. But in the ball, you don't necessarily see all those colors. What I want to show you I think are these three balls. So when you first look at these, you're gonna think you would think they were totally different colors, right? So you would think I would pick this one because it's yellow. You know, and if somebody likes reds and rust, they would pick this one. Well, if you don't look at the ball band, you're not going to know that these are all the same color. And that's what I mean by the ball has so many different colors tucked inside that you may not know. Like even if you look at the end of that ball, you can't really, you can't see any of this bright yellow really, unless you really look close in there, you can kind of see it right there. And you can see there, okay, right there. You can see that, can't you? There's like the dark brown and there's the gold. But if you don't know to look, you're just gonna walk up and on the shelf you'll be, oh, I like this color. And then all of a sudden you're gonna be surprised when this shows up when you're starting to knit with it. So here on this one, you can see, where is it, right there. You can see some colors there. So, and there's no names on here. They are all letters. So if you look there, it says EP, and then it tells you the weight. This is 160 grams. So EP, this one here is EP, and it's 150 grams, and this one here is EP, and it's 160. So there you go. There's my little scoop on county yarn. Always check the colorway to make sure you know what you're getting. So I had bought this. To me, I can't believe that yarn stayed up here and didn't fall. It is like suspended. That is hilarious. So I had bought enough of this to do a sweater at one point. One of Lucy Neepy's patterns. Okay, let's put those down. And as you can tell, I never got to it which is hmm. one day, one day. So that's my county. This was a bit of a mishmash. Oh, this was, this is a beautiful yellowy gold. I don't know what it is. It's really super soft. You know what I did find though? Were these two. I found one, I think I found the red I found one at first. I'm like, oh, I don't know. What did I buy that for? And then I saw the other one. And I'm like, as soon as you see them together, red and green, Christmas. I bought this at Little Red Mitten and I was going to make myself striped socks. Um, I don't know. Maybe there was no more. Because sometimes Christmas yarn, Christmas sock yarn goes pretty quickly. I know when Red Mitten would get in like some of the... Um, Hmm, what do I want to say? Regia, or maybe there was some Cascade sock yarn, and it would be gone. Like, it's pretty much as soon as it came in, sometimes it would be sold out really quick. So, I'm thinking there, there was a year I wanted some, you know, self striping sock yarn or whatever, and there was none. So, I found this and I thought, oh, that's fine. I'll just make my own. <laughs> well, as you can tell, it didn't happen either, but maybe. One day it will. So it's here. Actually, I have another idea that I actually might use that sometime in November for a project, but it's not actually a pair of socks, but something else Christmassy. I might, I might use that. This stuff I found, and I'm pretty sure we're going to find more of this around. I dyed this not sure if it was last. I think it was maybe two winters ago. Last winter, or maybe two winters ago with walnuts. And the story behind this, it must have been two winters ago because last winter I was not laid up with any broken bones. 
but the two winters before that I was. And I think it was two winters ago when I was laid up again with a broken bone in my knee. It was the middle of winter and I had my dad out collecting walnuts <laughs> from a tree um, near where he, where he and mom live. And I went online and they say, you know, you're supposed to collect I don't know what it said, but collect the walnuts, I think, before the fall, because they said this in this one article, they said, you don't you don't want them in the winter because they'll be, you know, rotten or whatever. Well, we got them probably late winter and they still died absolutely fine. So I think you can get walnuts any time of the year. But anyways, he was out it kind of digging through, you know, a light layer of snow, getting me these walnuts because I was home with nothing to do. And all of a sudden I got this idea that I could hobble around on my crutches and I could get a pot on the stove and I could, you know, soak walnuts and dye yarn, which I did and which was not a good idea when you're on crutches. But, you know, I did it anyways. So... Maybe that's, another, again, one of those things. If you're on crutches and trying to dye yarn, it's not always the best idea. You I mean, it's, you're hot, it's hot water. You have to drain stuff and rinse stuff. Again, one of those things. Do as I say, not as I do. Have supervision. Have help with you. <laughs> but anyways, I love how my yarn turned out. And I'm sure there's more around because I think this was probably the first go. I had one batch that turned out a lighter brown. And then I left the yarn, probably because I was on crutches and I couldn't dump the water or strain the walnuts out. I ended up letting them sit for three or four days in the water on top of the stove. And the longer they sit, the deeper color your dye pot turns. So well, naturally, I just got more yarn and dumped it in and I got a really, really dark color which I actually liked better. So I'm not sure exactly where that is, but I'm sure we'll come across it at some point. So anyways, walnut dyeing, lots of fun. Pretty sure you did not need a mordant for that. Don't quote me on that. If I used anything at all, it would have been vinegar, but I have a feeling that we didn't need anything for that. Um, oh, this was pretty. This came from a yarn shop that's no longer in business here in London, but isn't that, it's a pretty teal color on the screen. It's looking a little more royal blue, but it's teal. Zen Garden, that's another Canadian Ontario yarn dyeing company. Fairly, fairly close to here. Some, you know, somewhat local within driving distance. There is just, oh, this was smooshy. This is dream in color. And isn't that, that's a really nice, just shades of brown. Very pretty. Um, what else did I find here? This is lace weight. This is just off the camera screen, but I have got, so I've got this lace weight. I just put, set it down. It's still here. I'm, it's going to have to move somewhere else. It's a nitpick shadow basalt heather is the colorway. It's really quite nice. This was, I remember buying this when I was in one of my lace knitting buying mode. Say buying mode because I don't, I haven't knit with lace weight and really since I don't know when. But as you can tell, I have quite a bit of it around because I found two more skeins of lace weight. And these ones... This is, I don't know what I was thinking when I bought this bright color. I don't know. I don't know what I would do with this. It's a hundred percent lamb's wool. It's very soft, but it's kind of bright. This is a hundred percent cashmere. And can, look how fine this is. It's like, this is like thread. This is, okay, where's one? Look at that compared to, um, what do I want to grab? Oh, it's no, not that one. Or 
there's a two. So there we've got sock weight and this lace weight. It is just, I don't know. There, can you tell the difference? I don't know. Anyways, it's very, very, very fine. And that is supposed to, there was a pattern. I don't know if I still have the pattern, but I'm pretty sure that it, can, it knit up into just a tiny little triangle scarf, scarf, 100% cashmere. Anyway, that might be pretty much all the highlights. I did find two balls. Is this the other one? I knew there was two. It rolled off the table. This um, Sands Garn Smart. And I have a couple more colors of it over here. I've got a green and two shades of purple. And now I have a blue and a, and a light gray to go with it. Color work mitts, maybe. So, anyways, I know where these two. Their home is over here. So this was fun. I just kind of going through here, finding all of this. And it was, there was definitely more worsted weight than I thought there still was, which is making me a little concerned about <laughs> where I'm going to put all this worsted weight. My thought is. Okay, if I stand over here, you can kind of see the rest of this shelf. I've got a total of four shelves. I, there's this one, and there's that. Which way do I want to go? This one, this one, and then there's one underneath. So I've got four shelves here. The idea was to just make this a sock wall because I've got a lot of sock yarn um, in bags and totes out here in the hall and in my bedroom and there is a bunch downstairs. I have a feeling that I can fill this with sock yarn or pretty close to it. If it, <sighs> kind of thing, and keep all my patents together and then anything like this and this, anything that's not patents, kind of keep it maybe on this end, patents on this end. Somewhere I have to find a spot for some lace weight and then all of the worsted. I may end up buying a couple more shelves. We'll see. Or maybe, I don't know, this is going to be interesting. See, see how much I can fit in here. I think that's it. That's, that was the quick rundown. Well, not so quick. <laughs> <laughs> We're still over half an hour, but that's kind of, that's basically what I found. Um, oh, the one thing I did not, I'll show you really quick. I found a bunch. Did I show you this? All of this indigo dyed yarn. All different. There's some classic wool. There's some Briggs and Little. This is sock yarn. This is pretty much worsted. This kind of looks might look like a little heavier. And all different shades, just depending on how strong the dye bath was, if it was the first yarn in, the last yarn in the dye bath. This is something that my friend Debbie from Zerado Packers, um, she and I have done indigo dyeing for the last few years. We didn't do any dyeing together this year with everything that was going on. But if you want to see some really fun natural dyeing results, go check out Zeraldo Alpaca. Debbie did some dyeing at her farm this year with indigo that she actually grew in her garden, harvested the indigo, made the dye and dyed her alpaca yarn. Beautiful. She also did jewelweed and did she do, she, I know she's played around with marigold and she's done cochineal. And I think there was something else and I can't remember what it was. Anyways, if you scroll through her Instagram, you'll, probably, you'll see some really cute pictures of alpacas too, I'm sure. And some of her natural dyeing, which is really fun. So I'm just going to keep sock weight up here. This is going to go somewhere. My plan for this had always been to do a cardigan. Just kind of not striping maybe fading, doing something, just kind of mixing in 
all the different shades of the indigo and make a sweater out of it. That sounds kind of like a good January, February kind of project. What else? Oh, and I found a few skeins of this. <laughs> I have some of this marled over here. One is like a beige marl, one's a gray, and now we have black. So you just never know what we're going to find. Anyways, that is it for this video. That has basically got these top two shelves done. Tomorrow, I think, will be kind of... Maybe. <laughs> I'm not totally sure. I'm going to just kind of, I'll show you what the donation bin is going to look like because I've got some, I've got a pile here on the floor. I know Asa told me, Louise, you should not be piling yarn on the floor. You should get bins for it. Well, as soon as I, if I had more empty bins, I would use them. But for right now, I've got stuff piled on the floor. So anything that I can move over here onto the other shelf where the different weights of yarn are, maybe I'll kind of have to start shifting things around so I can make room as we find some extra balls. So that's that. One more step in this yarn room organization has come to an end and we'll continue on tomorrow. We've got all of this sock yarn down here and most of this is, oh, okay, is sock yarn except for the fleece artist yarn that I'm seeing. Okay, I'm gonna grab it right now. Oh, oh my gosh, had a little bit of an avalanche, but you know what? This does look like sock yarn, but does it not look? No, I suppose not. I was going to say, look very close to this. Well, there's some similarities there, isn't there? Oh, and this one's too greeny, but look at those together. Huh? Anyways. All right. Look at that. I've already, I've already jumped ahead to tomorrow's sorting. I guess I will just put this back on the shelf for right now. Okay. That's it, everybody. I will see you tomorrow.